Good evening. My name is Henry Cavill and I play Geralt of Rivia in Netflix's new series, The Witcher. I'm here to take you back to where we first met The Witcher, this book, The Last Wish. Let's begin, shall we? Hi, my name is Nacho, welcome back to the channel. And I love patterns. I love those riddles where there's a sequence of numbers and you have to guess which one is the hidden one. And after years, I started getting really good in noticing things that get repeated a lot. So why am I starting a Witcher video with that little bit of trivia? Well, in order to explain it, I have to quickly break down the first episode of the second half of the third season of The Witcher. Jesus, why do they complicate this shit so much? But before I do, if you like the video, please consider giving us a like and a subscription. Don't forget to turn on notifications, as it does help the channel a lot, and I will highly appreciate it. Good, glad we got that all sorted out. Right, so episode 6 begins with Redenia taking control of Aretusa during what's called the Thanet Coup, unlocking up some of the mages. Geralt, given his neutrality, is allowed to roam free without his sword. Tyr makes a run to the forest before Radovid gets her, but he's discovered by Jaskier, who, after a night of having his ass roughed up, wakes up and tells his now ex-boyfriend that he hurt his feelings. Fuck this show. Vilgafoss, who we learn was the bad guy behind it all, convinces Tissaia to break the shackles with her magic, and Geralt, who is right there, says and does nothing to prevent this. With the mages now free, we get what's probably the worst display of magic I've seen in a TV show. Well, since Blood Origin at least, but that was a whole new level of bad. Because I haven't read the books, I'm not entirely sure how Sapowski described the use of magic, but the sum of the mages' ability in this episode is just pushing people around with, I'm going to say, air magic, and some weird telekinesis movements while throwing poorly rendered energy balls. I swear to god, this is Dragon Ball Z evolution all over again. Bilgefoss betrays Tissaia. Oh no, what a tragedy. Who could have seen this coming? If only someone would have warned her, like, I don't know, the fucking protagonist? I'm gonna lose my mind doing this. So he lets Francesca and the Scorietel into the castle, the other mages square up, start getting immediately slaughtered by arrows until Tessaia steps up and decides to make a smoothie out of Philobandro. He'll be sorely missed. Let's just say Francesca did not take that very well. So she has a carry moment, brings down the ring of fire down on the mages, great song, and proceeds to hide behind a rock for the rest of the episode. And the rest of the fight kinda continues. This is supposed to be exciting, right? Well it isn't. Because the mages are wankers. Not only their powers are boring as shit, are there no specialists? They were in the game. I mean, fucking Tris was a fire mage? Redhead, it makes sense. Now she controls plants. What are you gonna do in a combat situation, love? Grow them a fucking ficus? Oh, and one of them starts dying of a heart attack. What is this? The US Senate? Half of the most powerful mages in the room were shell shock after one attack. Honestly, fuck this show, man. Anyways, the Brotherhood's stronghold falls incredibly quick. This mortadella of a woman pretending to be Kira Metz suddenly switches sides. Not that I cared anyways. Oh, and Fringilla is also here. I find it funny that Kahir doesn't acknowledge Fringilla until way after the fight started and they are all unclogged, but didn't they all walk in there together? Either that, or she just ex machina her way in right on time to save Francesca. Also, she gained weight. Like, a lot of it. You've got fat. <laughs> Siri and Jen are escaping until they are catched by Rinse, who gets taken out exquisitely well. And do you know why I like this scene so much? Mind the terrible sword transition? Because Geralt is in there. He chopped his head off. Remember whose name is in the show? This is not the Mandalorian where any Mando can be the protagonist, introducing Boca Ten. No, this is the Witcher. They've killed half of them last season, so there aren't many to choose from. Women can be witchers, Siri never fully becomes one, so you only got one option left. Probably the only cool moment in this whole episode slash season. Tissaia has had enough of this bullshit and summons Ulcer's Thunder, which sounds and looks badass, until we see she basically misses all important targets and makes herself an easy one after depleting all her powers. Another character, fucking wasted. The rest is pretty dumb, Geralt lets Siri fight Kahir on her own, like what the fuck? And before they can escape, he senses danger and tells her to run. Now, finally a Witcher moment. Except it isn't. Because Geralt goes for basically a ring around the rosy on this bitch ass set. He literally entered on one side and came back the exact same fucking way. And there's Pilgafoss. They thought we wouldn't notice. They start fighting and I know Geralt's gonna win. In my head, I'm thinking, there's no way he loses. He's not gonna kill him, but he's definitely going to win. You like my stuff? That's gay. Turns out that him losing this fight is actually canon in the books, which makes the following even more annoying. 
I'll pause the episode here. I did watch the other two, but it's pretty much more of the same, so I'm gonna save myself the editing time. Because here's where I saw the full pattern unfolded. Similar to many other TV shows and movies in recent times featuring a strong male protagonist and why this canonic loss for Geralt couldn't have come at a worse time. The pattern that has been established is the deconstruction of the male protagonist. Instead of the stoic and collected man who sees problem from a logical standpoint and doesn't let his emotions get in the way of his decisions because that could mean the death of people under his protection, and remember that witchers lose some of their emotions during the trial of the grasses. Male protagonists now break down more often, they cry, they show weakness and they need to be rescued often by a new figure of strength who usually takes the shape of a woman, who shows minimal emotion and has a sharp focus on herself and getting what she wants done the way she wants it and slowly but surely takes the play of the now emasculate male protagonist for sequels to come. That's what they did to Geralt this whole season. Her lawyer and Ciri are now the new Geralt. Ciri is still very early on her training but still takes the lead in almost all fights against monsters and humans twice, maybe three times her size, while Henry looks in the background and occasionally hits the killing blow. Or in the case of episode 7 and 8, he's not there at all. Fuck. You had a Game of Thrones level show and you fucked it. You took a huge stinking dump on it. The end is so open, which sucks, cause whatever happens to Geralt now to transition into becoming Liam Hemsworth is going to happen off screen. They couldn't even give him that. The quality of everything in this series as it went on dropped massively. The fans definitely noticed, they were vocal about it from season 1, they didn't listen and they dared to ask him to come back? That's like a car salesman asking someone to please buy a car, fucking sell it to me, offer me something I like. I'm the consumer, I'm the one you're trying to feed this shit to. There's someone crying, women and men, in almost every fucking episode of this season. It's called The Witcher, not The Crier. You can tell this season was super rushed and chopped up in the editing room. They completely wasted the character of Emir. Why can't here kill his best mate to later kneel down to Ciri? Fucking simp? It's obvious that they were in panic mode near the end and they didn't know what to do with the show, like challenge beauty standards? What the fuck are you talking about? It's called The Witcher. Show me Witcher shit. And they put Carlota as an example? She's one of the few good looking women they've cast. Take a look around. Take one look around. Why don't you tell us what you did to Fringilla or Kira Metz? Doesn't fucking matter because at the time of making this video, they've announced that they suspended production. Mm, radio, it's not like they are being quietly cancelled because of their terrible ratings. Why do they keep allowing these women and these blue and pink hair colored motherfuckers to get a hold of these IPs and fuck them into the ground? Oh, The only challenge the people making this show have is a mental one. Henry is now gone. The last few episodes has been all about setting up the sisterhood of mages and having Ciri take the name of Falca and going on to become a mercenary. Don't know if that's true, haven't read the books yet. They deviated so far from the source material and they kept adding this girl power bullshit which is basically in every show now, it's getting fucking ridiculous. Yes, women are great, I love women, but you know what women have proven to be not so great at lately? Writing good television! Ugh. But if you watched this far into the video, leave us a like, let me know in the comments down below which is your favorite Whatever. And as always, happy night. You hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.